everyone, Grady here. Today we are gonna talk about how to do a one leg crow in funky arms. If you are attempting this variation of this crazy arm balance, I would presume that you are very, very comfortable in crow pose. If not, then I would strongly recommend you to spend more time making bokasan a very familiar shape in your body, in your entire system, before you attempt this shape. If you are doing the shape, warm up, plenty of forearm planks, planks, building that you know, stability, that, that connection with your arms and your shoulders, upper back, low abdomen of course, and also some leg work. Because uh, a lot of people, they are struggling not with the base, but actually it's the leg lifting. So if you're doing this one, you might want to check the falling drill out. Generally, when I do like arm variations and inversions now, um, core, I would actually incorporate it with like um, uh, plank pose and also leg work. So it's more functional. I don't really isolate uh, the lower abdomen part uh, anymore because it's just harder to, I mean, for me, it's more efficient if I incorporate other body parts with it. So for leg work, when we are trying to lift the leg up in that uh, one leg crow in funky arms, there are actually two ways. So we are gonna work on the legs two ways. Start from a forward fold, uh, but the hands are a little bit further away from your toes. Okay, you will be on your fingertips, press the floor away, upper back is broad, shoulders away from the ears. Ground down with the left foot and then place up uh, toenails of the right foot down to the floor. Engage from the low abdomen down, including your butt, thigh, calf, and your toes. And then you are going to gently lift the leg up. Feeling your toes or fingers are light, um, exhale, bring it down. So when you're lifting, you're not, just use, you're not using your lower back to just kind of throw the leg up. Rather, you feel the pelvis coming from your abdomen, your glutes, butt, Okay, and your leg muscles, like your thighs, all that. Okay. Fingers lighter, lighter, lighter. Another one is very similar, except that we are going to start from a bent knee, just like another way of entering the arm balance. Same thing, I'll do the other side, just to pass things up. Now from here, you want to pull that left thigh into the belly, and then slowly press the left leg to the sky. Okay, you can flex, point, whatever toes that you want to. Making sure that the action is press and not just point the leg up. Pointing is relatively passive and light. Pressing requires effort. Breathing. Let's talk about the face, the funky arm. So, one side will be on forearm, the other will be on your palm. And I'll just do the right side, right? Forearm on the mat. And for me, I would measure it. So I would draw a horizontal line behind the elbow. Okay? And I would place the tip of my middle finger just behind that line. Okay? Checking that the elbows are able to hug in. I know that for, for me, um, I would have the elbow aligned to the, uh, not the elbow, the wrist, sorry, aligning to the elbow. I know that some people tend to have uh, the arm diagonally in, standing on an angle. Um, this is relatively easier to feel that push, but however way you set your forearm, just make sure that, that the starting point of that push is from the upper back and not from the neck and the top shoulder area, okay? Making sure it's this part, so it enables the elbow to hug in, creating more stability. If you initiate that push or that press from the top shoulder and your neck, chances are you feel the body collapsing and also the elbow would splay out. From here, left knee, left tricep. Elbows hug in, shoulders away from the ears, belly hug in, and then use your belly power to press the right leg all the way up to the sky. Belly, 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 glutes, butt, thigh, toes, hold. Shoulders away from the ears, elbows hug in. 
The variation that we just did was the leg was straight already and just presses up. For me, it's an easier way to get into the shape because the hips are already set. Okay. Um, I feel that if my hips are set and are not moving, then the leg, all I need to do is just engage my abs like crazy, engage my leg muscles like crazy, and then it would fly out. So for me, that, that transition, that movement is a lot easier to my system. There's another way, is the bent knee. Starting point is the same, left knee, left armpit, and then pull that right thigh into the belly first, then you press up. For me, I find that, in, uh, that variation more challenging because when I have to pull that right thigh into the belly, um, I need a lot of abs and the hips become heavy. I need to maintain that height of the hips in order for my leg to go all the way up. So if I pull the leg into the body, this part becomes heavier. So I need to push even more to extend the leg up to this guy. So just for my body, for my mind, it's just a little bit, and also that extra step of pulling in and pressing up, uh, it's a little bit time consuming. <laughs> I'm quite impatient. I'm like, ah, just get it over with and boom. And I prefer it that way. Whichever way that you choose, try to do it faster. <laughs> Don't take too much time fiddling your base because every single millisecond counts. The longer you hold in that shape, you struggle in that shape, the more tired you become because this is extremely effort and energy consuming. That's it for my sharing for today. If you also like this video, please click like and share it with your friends or whoever that you might think they could benefit from. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you again soon. Take it easy.